Hello, good evening everyone, respected faculty, valued students and esteemed guests. Welcome to the latest episode of IRE Talk series powered by GIBS Business School. I am Palak Bansal, your host for today's much awaited session about Entrepreneurship 2.0, Cultivating an Entrepreneurial Ecosystem in a Hyperconnected Age. Before we take a head dive into today's session, I would like to take a moment and elaborate on the idea of IRE ID Talks powered by GIBS Business School to our audience. At GIBS IRE ID Talks, we envision a world where knowledge, inspiration, and innovation are boundless, accessible to all, and unceasingly transformative. Our vision is to be the pioneer that transcends educational boundaries, fostering a global community of lifelong learners, forward thinkers, and change makers. GIBS Business School, managed by esteemed Goyal Educational Trust, is a prestigious institution located in Bangalore. It offers AICTE-approved PGDM and BBA courses from Bangalore University, providing students with a comprehensive education. At GIBS, we strive to cultivate an environment that fosters innovation, research, and entrepreneurship, thus IRE. Our mission is to empower individuals like you to reach their full potential both personally and professionally. We aim to develop strong leadership skills, facilitate valuable networking opportunities, and promote active engagement within our communities. With that said, let us now dive right into our today's session with Ms. Jasleen Kaur, CEO and co-founder Branding Elves, co-founder Via Ends Media, advisor, Innovation Council Board of Jammu University. Ms. Jasleen has an active experience of mentoring 10,000 plus graduates and postgraduates in the field of digital marketing. Her remarkable contributions in building our youth includes guest lectures at RBI, DPER, Punjab Technical University, Lovely Professional University, Central University, Jammu University, and other educational institutions. Today's IRE talk, we will discuss upon the evolving concept of entrepreneurship 2.0, cultivating an entrepreneurial ecosystem in a hyper-connected age. In a world where everyone and everything is just a click away, entrepreneurial opportunities have never been more vast and varied. This session unpacks the immense potential lying at the intersection of innovation and the connectivity. It's a call of action for young visionaries to harness the digital aids, tools, networks, and momentum and drive forward impactful change. Before I now hand over the session to Ms. Jasleen Kaur, I would like to remind our audience about the post-talk Q&A session. Please feel free to submit your questions in the Q&A section, and we will strive our best to address them live. Over to you, Jasleen. Okay, good evening, everyone. This is Jasleen Kaur, co-founder and CEO of Branding Hills, and Thank you for such a lovely introduction, Palak. After hearing that, I, I literally, I felt okay. I have done this part still now. So it really feels very nice to hear that. So thank you so much for such a lovely introduction. So I would like to wish all of you a very good evening. I hope all of you are in roaring high spirits. So today we are going to talk about uh, cultivating an entrepreneurial ecosystem in a hyper-connected age. So when uh, you read the topic, it sounds very uh, scholarly topic, like something, it's it's going to be really boring topic. So that is why I've added some colors on the presentation so that it gives you some tasalli, it's not going to be that boring. Okay. So today we are going to talk about how we can build entrepreneurial ecosystem in hyper-connected age. So when we first start with it, first, uh, let's understand what's a hyper-connected age. So if I talk about uh, social media, bachpan pe pehle hum the, uh, can I talk in Hindi if, if all of you understand that or should I just converse in English? Uh, just in the crowd would be a mix. So, okay. we so will I, I prefer English, not a problem, not a problem. Okay. So um, when, uh, when as a child, we used to uh, study colors. Okay. So we used to study yellow color. We used to study about brown color but today when you talk about colors you all know there's a video that went viral of uh, jasmine Kaur. so yellow color is now ladu pila color 
brown color is now mouse color so the analogy of colors has changed and no linguistic person has given that analogy to the colors these colors name has been given by a common person she she is a designer based in west delhi and she has given the name to the colors and now just because of social media her video went viral and now everybody is referring to those colors as the one that she has proposed so this is the beauty of social media talk about big brands talk about sheen talk about bevakoof.com so just look at the beauty of social media that sitting where you are you have the entire world in your pockets this is the beauty of it so if i tell about myself i am running five startups in jammu and kashmir so out of the five startups one startup is branding else that palak very nicely introduced about it's a branding and a design agency and here in we have some local clients some national level clients some international clients we have worked with brands like amul we have worked with brands like hershey's rayban vogue crello we have worked with such brands uh apart from this uh, branding else the rest four startups are digital media portals so digital media portals like you have your times of india Uh, like you have your new york times so similarly we have digital media portals but now i'm going to share the beauty of that so we have a workforce of 100 people we are sitting right here in jammu that is recognized as the hub of terrorism militancy no internet you know throwing pelting stones and you know that's the narrative that's out there because that fetches more trp but sitting here in jammu we are a team of more than 100 people working on digital media portals that are operational in us and uk markets so sitting here in jammu we are creating content for us and uk market we have brand deals from advertisers who are based in us and uk so just imagine matlab social media or you can talk about the entire iot you talk about ai this this artificial intelligence has empowered us so much that sitting in one place you can operate wherever you want so that's the beauty of hyper connected age okay so now we are going to delve into it as to how we can uh, use it for our gains so i'll proceed Okay, so there's a very beautiful quote that says, "Success in entrepreneurship is not about having the right connections, but about making the." Just a second. So, not having the right connections, but making the right connections. So that's a very important thing that we have to uh, take note of. So I'll just share a small brief introduction as to how my journey started based in Jammu and Kashmir because this hyper connected age that I'm going to talk about today that thing has actually fueled up my uh, journey professional journey. So basically, I am based in Jammu, and uh, I belong to a family where uh, it was not permissible for women to move outside and you know go ahead and work. So I was not allowed to work. So uh, I when I, when I came out, I did my electrical engineering. and that too from jammu again i was not allowed to move out side uh, the jammu region so uh, after i completed my electrical engineering uh, i wanted to start something so i had this bug i wanted to do something of my own i still remember so um, uh, kabadi wala i don't know what you refer to that person who takes your waste materials and in exchange he hands you some amount so i i used when well, i i wanted to earn something of my own so um, uh, i used to collect newspapers and all that i used to hand it over to kabadi wala and i used to get 20 rupees in return or no 40 rupees in return and i used to feel oh my god today i earned some money so that gave me the initial boost so um, when i was um, uh, uh, i came out of college i decided okay now just in its time you have to enter the professional journey but i had a very big monster standing in front of me that said okay you are not going to move out and you are not going to do this the societal pressure and all that stuff so um, that day i decided that i am going to write my journey nobody is going to write my story so what i did was i still remember there is this local news 
agency i called them up and i said i i love to write so is it like can you work out something that i'll write some articles for you and in exchange you can just give me some money whatever suits you because at that moment beggars can't be choosers na so i was like whatever amount i'm going to get it's fine so they were like okay that's fine so i wrote my first article and it got good like really good applause from the audience such that it got published as the cover story of uh, that uh, newspaper so they were very happy the uh, agency i was working with the news agency they said uh, why don't we uh, why don't you come full time and work with us so i had this thing in my mind that i'm not going to, um, i'm not allowed to move so what i did was uh, i i took my father there and after the interview they were all praises your daughter is this and that and stuff so when i still remember when we were stepping outside the door and uh, the first step on the staircase my father was above uh, uh, walking uh, above me so he just looked behind and said you're not going to do this job so that time i was like i had some cold shivers run down my spine i was like okay so the, my first step has failed i can do this but i cannot do this so i i worked around some strategy so that day like i told you you have to be the uh, writer of your own story that day i decided i'm not going to you know just sit and crib and whine why oh god why this has happened and listen to some sad arijit song and you know whine about that situation so what i did was i called up the agency again and i said is it possible somehow that but i start writing time for you like a part time i'll write but i'll not be coming to your location i'll be working from home at that time when work work from home was not a very uh, common concept so since the 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 work quality they were very happy with that i was allowed to do that so one and a half year i used to sit at home i used to write articles it used to publish and all that stuff now i'm going to tell you the beauty of hyper connected age as to what happened so when i used to write articles somebody i don't know who was that person somebody read an article of mine and that person was so so moved by the article that that recommended my name to a company who was searching for a content writer okay so uh, i i received a call i was done here like one and a half year i did not see any growth i'm just writing articles they are getting published and all so i don't know something happened some dot connected since all my work was all there on the internet somebody read an article somebody recommended my uh, name to some uh, company who was searching for a content writer and i received an interview call again i went for the interview aced the interview all good all done but then again family you cannot you cannot do a private job if you want go go ahead uh, clear some ias ks examination go and do some government job you will have no uh, blockages there but no private job so again that day i decided okay i have to work around uh, you know something i have to work make things work so what i did was um, i still remember um, i told my family that i am going uh, for tuitions wherein um, i'll be learning about i i am going for for government tuitions okay so the ssb ssc whatever is there i'm not very well versed with the terminologies so i i'm going for tuitions to prepare for my ias examinations so but in reality uh, my company was in that vicinity only i used from home in front of them i used to go for my tuitions but there i was working in a company so i had to lie about this so 6 months into that i got promoted in the company from content writer to i became the content manager of the company and 2 months more down the line i became the branding manager so growth was exponential it went very nice so um, i came back home and then i finally decided okay now i have to tell my family ki okay this is the truth when when i handed that very big moment to my father he was looking at the moment he was like what branding manager i think what what the hell is this so he because he was not well versed with that so i told my father i was like i am going to receive a flying chappal some flying thappar something is going to happen something some reaction is going to come but that day my father hugged me and he was like i am very proud of you and things like started uh, flowing so the the main crux of the matter is that had i not utilized uh my skills had i stepped back had i not utilized this the the world that was lying in my pocket my cell phone i would have been just a common person 
living just a common life you know writing just the common quotations on on instagram life is miserable life you have to struggle and all that stuff so this is the beauty of hyper connected age and i'm telling you digital media has worked wonderfully for me so after the branding manager thing so i started my own startups i think uh, during covid i started um and just imagine one thing that my entire company branding else or you talk about digital media portal the entire base of my startups are digital i don't manufacture anything yes i manufacture content but i don't have i don't have any industries i don't have any plants i don't manufacture anything but what i'm doing i'm doing it digitally so digital world has opened up immense doors of opportunities in front of us so so you also have to start utilizing that for yourself so i okay so when we talk about hyper connected age uh there's this very one interest came across and i this thing I, i have practically also implemented this thing first let's uh, talk about some stats because they say whenever you are presenting a presentation it's important that you present some facts and statistics so the some stats i collected so it says that 58% of marketers whose companies use generative ai for content creation said its uh, performance increased and i am one such example i properly we use mid journey we use chat gpt talk about any uh, ai tool my uh, team is using that and 54% of organization are seeing cost savings and efficiencies from using ai in it yes i i'm honestly telling you we were searching for uh, you can say we had some vac vacancies of around 3 to 5 content writers but three content writers have served the purpose so those two content writers the, the job of those two content writers is now being done by those three content writers using the chat gpt so it has actually increased it is cost effective and it has actually increased the efficiency of the entire company okay so talking about the hyper connected age so there's this very beautiful phenomena that's known as 6 degrees of separation i don't know if if you have ever heard about this so 6 degrees of separation says that consider any any person in your mind i i can think about barack obama i can think about amitabh bachchan i can think about any person in my mind that person is just six people away from you just six people away from you it can be six or less but six is the maximum so they they did uh, an entire series of research on that so i wanted to play a video i don't know if the audio would be Six degrees of separation. The theory that everyone and everything is six or fewer degrees or steps away from each other. You might be familiar with Stanley Milgram, a social psychologist best known for his experiments on obedience at Yale, which involved delivering electric shocks in a so-called memory test with increasing intensities. In 1967, Milgram coined the phrase six degrees of separation after conducting his small world experiment. describing that growing social networks had a world shrinking effect. The experiment tested how many steps it took for a package to be delivered from the West Coast in the US to a stockbroker in Boston by having one acquaintance mail it to another. He found that it only took an average of 6 steps to reach Boston in the 1960s. But what about now in the 21st century where social networking sites dominate the internet? If you use LinkedIn or Facebook You've seen the 6 degrees of separation at work. LinkedIn uses a connection system where individual profiles in the people you may know section are labeled as second or third connections, with a map showing how that person is related to you through your first connections, who are acquaintances already on your friends list. Similarly, Facebook shows a mutual friends count and now has a function that enables you to message friends of friends if enough shared contacts exist. It used to be that we were all just 6 degrees of separation apart, connecting anyone to anyone else by a finding a friend who knew someone else, who knew someone else, and so on. But research conducted by Facebook and the University of Milan in 
shows that the number of degrees is now as small as 4. 721 million active users and 69 billion friendships were analyzed for one month, and the results were as follows. 99.6% of all pairs of users are connected by paths within 5 degrees. 92 are connected by only 4 degrees. The average distance between all people on Facebook in 2008 was 5.28 degrees, and in 2011, it lowered to 4.74. Who knows what the number would be now? It's a small, small world. So what do you think about this theory? Do you think social networking decreases the number of degrees needed to reach someone? Let us know in the comments below! If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our website and other social media for more content. So coming back at it, so when I read about this phenomenon, I was very amused by it. So six degrees. So I, I can think about any one person, I need one random person I wanted to meet and that person is approximately six people away from me, six right people away. So I, I, I did this very small experiment. So uh, I, I wanted to meet the person who was directing. Hello, am I audible? Okay, so I wanted to meet the person who was directing shows like Crime Patrol, Savdhan India, because as a kid, I've, I've grown up watching those shows. So I always wanted to meet the person and understand like, how does he curate such shows? Like what goes on his, in his life and how is he able to do all this, you know, crime and all that stuff, how is he able to curate such stuff? So um, what happened once was I came across an author. So we had a very good discussion and she was like, oh, okay, so um, I'm very amused by your knowledge of books and all. So why don't you do some literary festival in Jammu? Mm. Since Jammu was very fresh market uh, when we talk about li literary events and all. So they were like, why don't you uh, do some literary events? So I was like, okay, that sounds cool. We mm -hmm. can do something like that. And you won't believe who was the first panelist for that event. She knew the director of of Sadhan India and Crime Patrol and that person wrote the book and that was the first person who be became the panelist for that literary event and I was like okay I was just this one person away from that just one person away so this uh, from this what we can conclude is that networking they, they say there are so many quotations about networking your network is your net worth and all honestly it's absolutely true absolutely true and with uh, the social age is that we are the digital age that we're living in it's not at all difficult to reach out to connect with who we want to so that's the beauty of our hyper connected age so uh coming back at it so now we understood that this is actually a small world. When when we meet someone, we say we live in a small world, but this is actually a small world where, where we are living in. And we are very closely connected with each other. We have platforms available. We have LinkedIn available. So uh, I am right now sitting in Jammu. Uh, Pavlene from Gibbs Business School reached out. She came over to Jammu. She reached out to me for this talk. So, see, Jammu, right now sitting in Jammu, I'm talking to people who are sitting in Bangalore. What a beauty. Getting my point? So, you have all the tools in your hands. I, I First of all, I really want to know how many of you are thinking about starting something of your own, or maybe a startup, maybe you want to get into entrepreneurship, you want to develop some product, you, you have some ideas with you. How many of you are actually looking forward to that? Okay, cool. A lot of people. That's really nice. So the first step, as an entrepreneur, the first step I would uh, ask all of you to follow is start use utilizing these platforms. I don't know if you guys have seen Doraemon uh, cartoon or not, but Doraemon always had that anywhere door. So this laptop, this cell phone is your anywhere door. Use it, build connections. And remember, you are just six people away from the person you want to reach. So this does not mean you'll start stalking. Okay. <laughs> Use it professionally. Okay. So now we understood that uh, uh, everything is just one click away. 
anything is possible so if i talk about my startups like i told you i have no product no product in my hand i'm not selling a product i'm selling a digital space i have a digital media portal wherein i am filling content that is my product wherein we are doing seo getting the uh, getting our uh, articles ranked and i am selling that digital space to different uh, businesses that are based in us and uk so everything is possible so now getting into my favorite topic so we understood that hyper connected age we are living in it we have to utilize the tools that are available start being more active on linkedin start being more active on instagram facebook whatever works for you twitter you want to reach bureaucracy twitter is uh, the platform for you you want to reach private players linkedin is the platform for you so just go ahead and explore now we go one step more inside so that's the entrepreneurial ecosystem so uh, palak it would be really kind of you if you could play this video also sure i'll do it An entrepreneurial ecosystem is all the resources that surround entrepreneurs as they move their business forward. Ecosystem building is about getting those resources and folks in the community to work together by creating an environment of trust and collaboration, supporting big ideas, supporting people when they take risks, supporting people when they fail, creating that right culture that is ripe for entrepreneurial success. because of the changing nature of our economy and our communities we have to take new approaches and ways that will make sure that everyone has the opportunity to participate traditional ways of supporting entrepreneurs looked at the individual parts of an ecosystem ecosystem builders take a systems view they put entrepreneurs front and center in that system and they say how can i make our community more supportive of entrepreneurs of all types so the role of an ecosystem builder is really a systems leader it really takes leaders stepping up who care about the whole system and not just the individual parts of the ecosystem entrepreneurial ecosystem builders come from economic development community development libraries universities they come from different sectors they could be entrepreneurs themselves anyone who cares about the success of entrepreneurs in their community the challenge is that there's thousands of people that are working on building their entrepreneurial ecosystem but they were doing it what i would call custom and bespoke ways there's very little consensus on some basic elements how do we create the environment in which entrepreneurs in our community can thrive what are the processes what are the steps how do you build an ecosystem how do you measure the health of an ecosystem and i think as that practice of ecosystem building matures it becomes more available to more communities The only way we're going to figure out how to do this is to figure it out together. one question that i have always come across uh, is that um, how do we make it big how do we scale it up and you know how do we uh, make a mil- our first million dollars i always tell everyone that uh, it's it's not important that your first idea is going to get you a billion dollars maybe it is the foundation stone or the stepping stone for the next big idea that is actually going to take you there but for that idea to survive first of all it's very important to be present in an entrepreneurial ecosystem now the question arises what is an entrepreneurial ecosystem so i I'll, i'll just share some uh, the top key components of an entrepreneurial ecosystem so it comprises of startups number 1 both successful startups and aspiring startups so i i was just going through some questions so uh, some of them are looking like some chat gpt generated but some of them are like really uh, very nice questions so somebody was meant somebody has mentioned uh, about some mentorship just give me a moment i want to see that question mm-hmm.
I am not able to find that. It was something related to mentorship. So, uh, what is the important of importance of mentorship uh, in uh, on entrepreneurship? So, uh, I uh, Jasmine, yeah, mentorship and networking play in the fostering uh, in fostering entrepreneurship 2.0. Absolutely, absolutely. So, I I think it is the foundation of it. ideas there are thousand ideas that cross your mind and if you are not having any mentor in your life anybody who has actually been there done that your journey is going to be good but why uh, you know extend your entrepreneurial journey for 3 3 years when you can actually get it done uh, in 3 months so how is that possible so that is why i say the first key component of an entrepreneurial ecosystem is startups both the successful ones and the aspiring ones so the successful ones can guide the aspiring uh, startups as to what works what does not work okay this might uh, you know you you need to change this part of the idea to make it more monetizable uh, or if you really want to scale up drop this thing in your idea and maybe just add this thing so this uh, to and and it's a two way road so the successful startups can learn from aspiring startups because what happens is uh, after some point you, your brain also starts you know playing safe and the monetary aspect of the entire thing becomes more uh, uh, lucrative so you you are totally focused on earning more money so the aspiring startups who want to create startups who have brilliant idea in, ideas in their minds they can you know infuse that that energy that creative ideas in the successful startup so it's it's a two way road then the next important component is educational institutions like your school so iri talks i first of all i really want to it's a commendable work that you guys are doing i saw your videos from the speakers you had on board the kind of content that they were delivering i am pretty sure that all the people who are attending iri talks are taking the maximum out of it trust me you talk about any big idea you talk about a uh, uh, sold store you talk about any big idea facebook or whatsoever all of them started at an educational institution level so i i feel like academia is uh, the breeding ground for ideas to thrive so that's a very strong key component of an entrepreneurial ecosystem next is incubators and accelerators obviously you need some support capital support to take it to the next level there are several schemes of the government that are available under a startup india so a lot of uh, things are happening and there are many private players who are uh, running their own accelerators so if you if you uh, have an initial idea you can take uh, support from incubators they'll take i don't know how, what's the standard equity right here it's like 2 to 3% of equity against some capital so accelerators will uh, so once your uh, idea is workable it is it can generate some income and also accelerator can help you scale that to the next level okay next is investors and funding organizations obviously funding organizations like bank financial uh, institutions that play a very important role in uh, an entrepreneurial ecosystem then we have some support organizations so for example right here in jammu and kashmir we have a jnk startups association so they provide mentoring they help you connect with the right people uh wh wherever your idea uh, at what stage is your idea and what are the necessary things you need to make that idea survive and thrive in the long run so you get that support so such support organizations are very important and then we have private and government sector individuals so there are many private players who love uh, to invest in startups and all so these are the uh, basic key components of an entrepreneurial ecosystem and it's very important that all of them work together to make the idea survive okay so i'll i'll share something with you so the our recent experience we uh, have recently uh, organized and conducted the biggest j and k startup fest here right here in jammu and jammu we have conducted the mega startup fest wherein we had all the stakeholders who are who help a startup thrive you talk about uh, academia we had different universities we had incubators we had investors 
we had financial institutions like banks all of them all of them came together and we did this mega event that was an awareness event and now on we have some follow up events that are lined up trust me it was something that was missing right here so you are li living I, i again that's a perception that i have that bangalore is already a good breeding ground for uh, startups but right here we had some challenges so we recently did this and we received a phenomenal response we had a footfall of 5000 plus people who were entrepreneurs aspiring entrepreneurs all all those people we uh, launched india network accelerator so the ceo of india network he was present at the event and he launched his own accelerator program that is going to help uh, fuel up the startups we launched a j start angel network that is going to help fund different startups at different levels we have uh, also initiated yuva yatra wherein we are going to make sure that we change the narrative of jammu and kashmir and under yuva yatra we are going to produce 150 startups in the next one year from the land of jammu and kashmir next um, while we were organizing uh, this event uh, we did it in jammu university so when we were organizing we had uh, uh, there there's a recent course that was introduced there that was design your degree so it's a very innovative course uh, you should definitely read about that so uh, they are in fourth semester they are freshly passed out from 12th they are like fresh fresh uh, 12th pass outs they were they've been into this degree since just one year and three to four weeks of organizing this entire event and we took out five startups from that five startups already launched from that community then we have all also stated that we need some revision of startup policy and we had some really eminent speakers like i told you india the ceo of india network we had uh, with us we had a uh, co-founder and uh, chief global merchant officer of oyo rooms mr anush tejpal and many such uh, you know uh, em eminent speakers now why am i telling you this obviously number one is marketing <laughs> i am marketing about the event so that that runs in my dna second i want to tell you that just with one event wherein all the stakeholders that the key components i was talking about just with one event having all of them together has completely changed the entire wave of jammu and kashmir just with one event we were able to do this so now you decide sitting right there in bangalore your six degrees of separation you have every damn thing in your vicinity you can reach out to people you can join different programs you can reach out to accelerators if you you your college might be having an incubation center so just imagine the possibilities that you have with you so my key take away from the entire thing is get started with what you have your idea again like i said it might not be the billion dollar idea but you never know with the right mentorship with some some uh, you know some working around the idea it can actually be the next big thing so guys entrepreneurship in today's hyper connected age is super cool super cool so uh that's all from my side and i'll just take up like two three questions and then we can call it a day okay sure just in uh, we can do class okay so um, is uh, what are the key characteristics of a thriving entrepreneurial ecosystem so uh, what i have uh, realized through this event uh, was for an ecosystem thrive it's very important that the private and the government players come together it's very important to bridge that gap because what happens is as as uh, private players we have certain things in our mind government uh, 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 creates its own policies and also it's very important that both these segments come together they work together 
and then the, the outcome is going to be phenomenal that i'm sure next thing uh where's the question i will go with it okay next thing is like i told you start stop overthinking stop think acha one more thing many people think that uh matlab my idea has to be super uniquely like out of the box it's not important so there's this one terminology known as design thinking i would really love all of you to go through youtube and you know see some videos regarding that so design thinking is very important so there used to be time when early man used to drag such big truck loads of things so they invented wheel so they did some design thinking they invented wheel and the things became smoother so design thinking is one aspect that you have to take care of look around move around in your college so if you are searching for your next big idea move around in a college campus move around on the streets of bangalore see what are the problems that are coming for example i still remember i was listening to this podcast of vinita uh, the founder of uh, sugar cosmetics she said so there was a very big market gap so cosmetics was also what a sugar brand the same mascara same lipstick everything is the same hai na there is nothing out of the box or something very exceptional it it's it's a cosmetic product but now i'll tell you what is the uh, problem solution statement that she said she said there were brands like uh, blue heaven and i don't know i don't know she uh, said out some brands they were 200 300 this was the range of those products cosmetic products then we had sephora mac they were like 1500 plus so the the middle so when we talk about cosmetics it's something related to derma and women are usually be very careful around that so they wanted so that was very expensive mac and sephora but revlon and blue heaven that were very cheap so they did not want to apply that they could not afford to apply that so here is where this stupendous idea of sugar cosmetics came in they have a mid range of 700 to 800 that is workable for indian audience and this is how this beautiful startup came into picture so it's not important that you all you have to create some robo that is speaking and you know doing cart wheeling and only then your startup is going to stand out there are bigger gaps available in the market move out in the market study the market figure out what are the problems a common man is facing and then apply your design thinking fill up the idea and maybe it is the idea that is going to thrive okay so second question i can take uh, is mm, can you share example of successful startups that have leveraged the hyper connected environment you talk about uh, talk about any brand you talk about sheen brand so it it just came it 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 was there all over the internet it flourished and it's it's doing well you talk about bevacook you talk about soul store all of them you talk about any big brand that is so uh, many successful brands you talk about if you just uh, look at the journey they are not they don't have a legacy of 50 years they are brands who are 5 years old 4 years old so you talk about any big any brand any big brand that is doing the rounds any big brand while scrolling on instagram any brand you come across any big brand that's thriving they have used this hyper connected age okay so uh uh just link this one question which i would also like to know Yes, uh, that is what impact does social media have on building and promoting entrepreneurial ventures? So, if you could just answer that for all of us. Uh, can you please repeat the question? What impact does social media have on building and promoting entrepreneurial ventures? Okay. Okay. So, uh, the answer is very clear. It plays a very very huge role in actually strengthening the entrepreneurial. Uh, 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 idea so uh, like i was telling you about uh, so i i'll tell you the story of how i landed rayban 
it's it's a very simple very short story using social media so what happened was we did one shoot so we had a local uh, sunglasses client that was locally based we did a very you know very nice shoot we did the entire set i think it was a halloween inspired shoot or something of that sort so uh, when we did the shoot again dots connected some video from that shoot went viral it reached the places and we received the call from the market. marketing head of rayban that they want to work with us a very simple example that i have myself lived okay second uh, when covid was uh, happen when when covid was there we did an entire literary festival online entire literary festival we did it digitally just imagine we had speakers whose books were uh, adopted from uh, who were, whose books were taken up by amazon prime so they are going to get out of it we had authors whose uh, book was uh, we had a filmmaker whose movie was uh, premiered in kan film festival so people of such stature we had them online and we did a very successful literary festival social media if i talk about social media uh what else what else example so i have plenty of examples i just have to get into that bag so you so it's it's very simple like i told you it's it's like an anywhere door of doremon so you want to connect with me palak you just send me something on linkedin maybe you have some idea you would want to discuss with me just one message away just give me a reference i am from uh, gives business school and we did a talk together always available so that's the beauty of it maybe you present me some idea maybe i'll i'll tell you okay uh, you need some working around this maybe you can add this or you can do this i can also uh, get you attached with the accelerator launch so just just one message away every any damn thing just one message one call away so that's the beauty of social media and brands talk about any brand after uh, i think after covid there was a paradigm shift each and every brand you talk about local stores retail outlets local bakeries local restaurants all of them are available online now so that's that's it that's very rightly said though um so we have a couple of questions uh, jasleen one is how can entrepreneurs contribute to solving societal challenges through their ventures i think that's a, a deep question if we can just you know touch upon that one yes bilkul yeah. definitely so how can entrepreneurs contribute to solving societal challenges through their ventures so uh, i i know of a, a person he is uh, he's a very good friend of mine and he is into uh, he runs an organization with the name of global citizenship foundation so um, that's you can say that's an ngo wherein all the people from different countries different parts of the world they connect together and they work together in solving several problems that are existing in the society so i think again um, can you just can i just have a look at the question where has it gone some other uh, question yes so the question was uh, how can the entrepreneurs uh help in solving the societal challenges with their ventures okay yes okay so first of all as an entrepreneur always keep in mind that we have solutions up our sleeve solution is our middle name always remember entrepreneurs when when as an entrepreneur when you get started you don't uh, a real entrepreneur does not always start with an idea okay i'm going to make money out of it first that person is facing some problem first that person identifies the problem suggests or poses a solution then works on it and then makes it uh, monetizable so i i think entrepreneurship is all about entrepreneurship is actually uh, okay so i'll i'll tell you one more thing uh, the jk startup association i am a part of that also so we had uh there was this girl who was a podcaster so she is locally based so through the event that we recently did 
we could connect her to a podcaster who is based in delhi and now both of them are collaborating and working they have like created an awesome thing out of that so i think as an entrepreneur uh, solution solving problems and solution is a part of it so it, it just comes with it the we will have the last uh, question for the session how can entrepreneurs balance innovation and risk management in a rapidly changing environment okay okay so uh, you are talking about balancing uh, innovation and risk again again this this is a very uh, standard question it, it does not apply uh, you know symmetrically everywhere depends on the kind of uh, the entrepreneurial venture you have so uh, when i talk about risk management in digital sphere <clears throat> if right now i talk about my if i talk about my venture 2 years ago i had a team of 5 to 10 people just in case something went wrong digitally and our entire thing was you know called out the the dire situation something happened and everything was shut and something happened so i i did not have much risk like i told you i i don't have any inventory that i had to lose so everything is digital but now i have a workforce of 100 people and every decision that has to pass through me there are 10 iterations i have to apply to that it's not a yes or a no it's never a black on a white when we talk about taking decisions in terms of risk in entrepreneurship it's always the gray area you have to understand you have first of all whenever we are discussing with the board of directors a big decision that we have to take we make two columns the pros and the cons we have to measure the pros of taking this decision the con of taking this decision what else can come out of it okay what if the the if else loop if if that we all have studied so risk is something that is going to be there all the time when you are pursuing your entrepreneurship you might be reading about byju's nowadays so this it is it is not that this risk just came into the picture it was there all along some decisions influenced it in uh, it in this way that it landed where it is right now so risk is always going to be there you cannot say that uh, now if if you talk about zomato they say it's it's not a profit generating startup you you talk about byju's you all might be seeing the news uh, about what uh, byju's is undergoing right now so risk is there first thing as an entrepreneur that is what you embrace you embrace the risk so you cannot uh, play safe and then uh, think about innovation innovation always comes with uh, with the risk you talk uh, this reminds me of that pad man the person who wanted to innovate who wanted to create sanitary napkins he was everybody told that this is a crazy guy crazy guy crazy guy but just see the revolution that he has brought so i believe as an entrepreneur there is no play safe it is always risk is always involved and again you have to calculate the decision that is that risk worth taking that's the main question you have to address that's all that's very rightly said jasleen and uh, with that i would just uh, summarize the whole session wherein we discussed about social media and how the right use of the world inside our pockets can actually lead us to any person that you know we aspire to meet we aspire to connect with and how it is just you know Uh, it's amazing how we are just six people at the max away from the person we want to meet and i mean you definitely are one example of that person for us as well then we walked uh, on to generative ai how that is the new savior for entrepreneurs and how it has been changing the whole landscape and then yes of course mentorship and entrepreneurial journeys so i think that was the whole um, a uh, booster which i can say that if you're starting your entrepreneurial journey you can have a mentor who would make it easier for you who can who can correct your mistakes before you even make them so i think yes that was one power packed uh, session and with that we would be uh, concluding this session today 
and on behalf of the GIBS Business School, I extend a very heartfelt gratitude to you, Jasleen. Her, uh, your inspiring journey from vision to reality has undoubtedly left an indelible mark on all of us. It was great learning from you. And I would also like to express my gratitude to all the participants and their active engagement, which has contributed to the resounding success of this event. Your presence and enthusiasm has made this session truly unforgettable. For regular updates and valuable insights, please stay connected with GIBSB School and IRE Talks on YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you can find us. And we will return with another power-packed IRE Talk on 28th of November, 2023. To revisit or check out this IRE Talk or any of our previous IRE Talks, please do visit our YouTube channel at the rate GIBS Business School. The certificates for today's event, they will be distributed uh, by tomorrow, that is November 17th, uh, 2023. Thank you all once again for your presence. Uh, thank you, Jasleen. Thank you. thank you so much. The pleasure was all mine. And I would like to tell all the 112 participants sitting here that in this hyper-connected age, I am looking forward to connect with all of you. So thank definitely, you so much. Definitely. Thank you so much. We look, we look forward to your active participation and Definitely. also to all our participants for our upcoming IRE Talk series about the entrepreneurial journey, overcoming challenges and embracing failures, which happens on 28th of November. The registrations have been opened now. Thank you so much once again. Okay. See you. Have a good evening. Bye-bye, everyone.